joining us for this Sipping Thoughts event. So today we're talking that makeup is great, but healthy skin is even better with Dr. Nupur Jain. And it's a very exciting topic, maybe because right now, I guess with COVID, a lot of us are still wondering, do we want to go to the salon? How much can we do at home? What can we do at home? But before we go ahead, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Sipping Thoughts. So Sipping Thoughts is a multi-platform media company that was co-founded by me and by Meeta Gudgutia. It was set up keeping in mind the tagline, Real Women, Real Thoughts. We wanted to create a no judgment platform and a network of women for women. Sipping Thoughts reaches about 2.5 million women on a monthly basis. We're available on Facebook, we're available on Instagram, and of course on YouTube. You can check us out there. This session though is all about, I guess, good skincare and how can we all get good skin. It will focus with Dr. Nupur on the top 10 tips to achieve healthy and glowing skin straight from her expert knowledge. So she will also be giving us simple hacks that we can do routinely to make sure that our skin is healthy and glowing without any makeup. And also she will share some DIYs to keep our skin at the top of its game. A little bit about Dr. Nupur. She is an MD in dermatology. Like again, when I look at her, I still think all of <laughs> <laughs> And is the founder and consultant dermatologist of Skin Gest, which is in Gurgaon and is one of the leading and most popular dermatologists and cosmetologists in the Delhi NCR area. She has an experienced eye in diagnosing and treating not only common skill ailments, but even complicated and rare dermatological diseases. She is credited with bringing aesthetic dermatology, eyebrow microblading, various injectables for face sculpting, anti-aging procedures, lasers and hair loss therapies to Gurgaon. She's one of the pioneers to bring new technologies such as Dermafrac, advanced facials and non-surgical facelifts. But even being a dermatologist, she believes that less is more and tries to help the patients becoming the best possible versions of themselves. So Dr. Nooper, first of all, welcome to Sipping Thoughts. We're so excited to have you here. Thank you. Same here. And I'm uh, really excited to uh, be interacting with amazing women over here. And it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. So first of all, tell us what is aesthetic dermatology and why you're focused so much on it? So uh, aesthetic dermatology is basically about, um, uh, you know, it's not about treating skin diseases as such, but uh, as you uh, said in my introduction, making someone look the best possible version of themselves. So it's not about uh, what bothers me when I look at you, it's about what bothers you when you look at yourself in the mirror. So that's what aesthetic dermatology is all about. There could be one, uh, you know, one scar which bothers you when you look at yourself or it could be, uh, you know, your sagging uh, uh, lips or your sagging cheeks. So uh, the whole idea of doing any kind of treatment in aesthetics is to help you feel more confident and uh, look the, you know, the best. My next question, of course, and I love to find out all of this. So what is the latest, greatest and newest thing that is right now happening in this area? <sighs> So latest is of course, um, you know, since all of us uh, have been at home, so there are a lot of uh, natural remedies and a lot of home care that people are doing uh, as far as the treatments are concerned. Um, microneedling with uh, platelet rich plasma therapy and other growth factors is a huge rage. Uh, people are uh, getting it done as an anti-aging procedure, as, uh, you know, treatment for the scars, open pores as well. And uh, the fact that in platelet rich plasma, we use the person's own blood cells to give uh, growth factors so that is um, uh, that's a huge rage then uh, the korean skincare regime the korean skincare that's another thing which is uh, hugely popular people uh, you know keep uh, asking about it and people keep uh, you know people are very interested in knowing about that um, the jade rollers the gua sha that's something which people are you know uh, uh, have started using at home and um, it's a it's a beautiful tool to uh, keep you looking younger and uh, uh, you know, fresh uh, for a longer time. Now, of course, I have to ask this question because, you know, of course, when we look at all of this, can you achieve the same results at home that you get in a salon or that you get in a clinical treatment? And what's the difference between a salon treatment and a clinical treatment? And then I know I'm going to turn it over to you because I know everybody's going to be impatient and they want to get straight to how to take care of their skin. <laughs> 
Okay, so uh, I mean, as far as home care is concerned, uh, I am a huge believer that you know, a uh, lot of ingredients which are available at home, uh, which you know, our grandparents, grandmothers used to use, they work wonders for the skin, like uh, to maintain your glow, to you know, for exfoliation, um, uh, for you know, uh, removing the puffiness. They are amazing ingredients but if you have any particular skin concerns for example if you have pigmentation if you have melasma if you have acne or if you have scars you can't really expect these home uh, remedies to, uh, to to be able to treat that because when the changes occur at deeper level in the skin um, the home remedies are pretty diluted and are not able to reach to the target layers to cause any major impact in those so that's where the uh, clinical treatments come in the picture now if you compare salon treatments with uh, clinical Medical treatments, I don't think that's a fair comparison at all because, um, and in the salons, we have uh, you know, you, it's a salon is a good place to feel relaxed with a massage, or you know, you get a nice uh, facial to get a glow for about a day or two. Whereas in the clinical setting, we do treatments which are very uh, which have a lot of scientific backing. So, whatever treatments um, are being done in a clinic, they only come. Uh, uh, they only start once all the scientific studies have been done. So they have real impact which lasts longer. So if you're looking for, um, uh, you know, if you're looking for results which are longer lasting and are uh, actually going to help you uh, look better, then um, uh, clinical treatments is the way to go. Awesome. So I will turn it over to you once again. Welcome, uh, because my questions will never end. So I'm going to ask them in the <laughs> guys, we have left a lot of time this time for Q&A at the end of the session also. So please do, I know I do see some questions that come privately to me, but please do start thinking about your questions and we will have Dr. Nupur answer them for us. Go ahead, Dr. Nupur. Thank you, thank you, Sukriti. So, um, uh, welcome everyone to this session. So, today we'll be focusing on 10 uh, important things which I feel from my experience, and especially in the past few months practicing post COVID, which uh, most commonly people ask or most commonly people are, uh, you know, wondering about whether, you know, this is the right thing or not. So, I have taken out those 10 topics and I'm going to be speaking about them. Um, to start with, I will just be sharing my screen. So, uh, makeup is great, but healthy skin is even better. So, uh, if you uh, have a healthy skin, even a minimal amount of makeup is going to make you look radiant and uh, glowing. But if your skin is not healthy, no matter how much makeup you do, you're, you will not be able to get that perfect look that you're looking for. Coming to the first and the most basic and the most important thing is the skincare routine. Uh, when we come to uh, skincare routine, the word routine itself makes it sound so mundane and so boring that a lot of us uh, end up losing interest in it. Um, uh, Sukriti, can I ask questions to the audience? Oh, please do. Okay, so how many... The chat box also. Um, I mean, people can raise hands and answer. How many of raise hands, or they can write in the chat box and they can. Okay, answer. okay. So, uh, I mean, how many of you actually have or follow a skincare regime or a skincare routine? Okay, I see a no. I somewhat. <laughs> most days Parul not says, actually not actually parul says most days namrata on and off nilima few days sometimes okay okay the fact that uh you have come to this session to listen to me speak about the skin that means you do want your skin to look good or you do want your skin to be healthier but if you're not um, uh, even following the skincare regime then that is the first thing that you need to do skincare should be a habit just how getting up and washing our faces or getting up and brushing our teeth is similarly your skincare routine should be a habit for you just five minutes in the morning and five minutes at night that's all that is required i don't expect for someone who's not even started doing anything to do a 10 steps uh, 10 step skincare routine which koreans follow but at least like a basic three step that is your cleanser um, toner or a, a treating serum and moisturizer followed by sunscreen. That's it. That's the most basic thing that is required and is going to help you uh, 
maybe you know it'll uh, take down your aging process by almost a decade so start doing that from today itself uh, use a cleanser which is suitable for your skin type figure out what is your skin type whether it is oily whether it is um, uh, dry or it is combination or sensitive just understand your skin type first start a routine with a cleanser instead of toner i prefer to use the word treat uh, or a treating serum uh, if you have any skin concern if you have pigmentation if you have acne so your serum or your cream which is in between your cleanser and moisturizer will be based on that so apply the cream or the serum and then you need to moisturize moisturizer is again based on your skin type uh, if you have an oily skin, a lot of people feel that my skin is oily, I don't need to apply a moisturizer, that's a complete myth. Because on oily skin, that means your oily glands are secreting more amount of uh, secretions because they are dehydrated. So if you don't apply the moisturizer, it's a vicious cycle, they will keep secreting more amount of oil leading to more breakouts. So uh, you can apply a thin, light, gel-based moisturizer uh, instead of using a heavy uh, cream one. Whereas if you have a dry skin, you can use a uh, cream based moisturizer and uh, the same thing for the night the night time is the most important time for your skin that is where the repair and the uh, you know the uh, rejuvenation process happens you need to make sure that you do not ever sleep with the makeup on uh, how many of the people in the audience uh, they have a habit of removing their makeup and sleeping 90% of the time <laughs> yeah. okay that's <laughs> <laughs> that I mean, uh, if you're sleeping with your makeup on, that's the biggest crime that you can do against your skin. So please don't ever do that. You need to allow your skin to breathe. So remove your makeup. Again, use your cleanser, apply your serum, night serum, and apply your moisturizer, good layer of moisturizer, and then sleep off. And allow your skin to do the repair, all the dirt, all the pollution, everything that we have accumulated on the skin throughout the day, let it all uh, get washed off and uh, so that the repair can take place. So that is one thing. Sorry, so to no, go ahead. I, there are two okay. questions that have come in. So I will take them right now because they're related to what you're speaking about. Okay, okay. So, um, I mean, the, the, your night cream or night serum is again going to be based upon your uh, skin concerns and skin type. And um, uh, the second thing which, okay, so today we can ask, we can do the yeah, question. Yeah, Uma has asked, which serum would you suggest? And then there's another question is, which moisturizer is best for oily and combination skin? Okay. Um, as far as serum is concerned, as I said, uh, serum would depend upon your particular skin concern. If you don't have any skin concern, it's just as a basic anti-aging uh, uh, thing you want to start with using a serum, you can maybe use a vitamin C serum in the morning and you can do a hyaluronic acid or you can use a vitamin A serum or vitamin E serum at night. Um, that's the basic that you can start with. If you have any particular concern, if you have pigmentation or melasma, then maybe some, uh, you know, serums which contain the depigmenting agents or the lightening agents like uh, kojic acid or niacinamide, um, arbutin, liquorice. These are all very good ingredients which are available in, um, you know, some most of the good brands. Uh, you can start using those. And which moisturizer um, is best for oily and combination skin? Because I think combination skin is one of the toughest ones to decide how do you moisturize and what should you do? Uh, for oily and combination skin, you should uh, pick up the moisturizers which are very light, gel based. Um, uh, if you want me to name a few brands. The uh, Hylio Gel is a good one. It's a very good moisturizer for oily skin. Uh, you can use Acne Moist. Acne Moist also is good for oily and acne prone skin. Physioactive is another favorite of mine, which I always uh, prescribe to my acne patients. And uh, Bem Biohydra is another new one which has come up, which helps in repairing also and is very light on the skin. So these are the few good uh, uh, moisturizers for oily skin. And which toner? Everybody wants to know. <laughs> okay, so uh, honestly, I'm not a big fan of toner. Um, Why toner? Not? Because this is a good question. Because when we grew up, it was clean. CTM, yeah. Yes. 
<laughs> okay, so um, toner many times it contains uh, very harsh chemicals like alcohol and astringents, and that can cause reaction in people who have sensitive skin. So I have rosacea. I have a very sensitive skin. I have had a very bad reaction after using the uh, toner. So that's how you know I have. I I don't prefer to use toner for myself. And even for my patients, if you need to use a toner, use something which is completely non-alcohol based. Um, just you know uh, after cleansing, just. Uh, put the toner in your cotton pad and gently clean your face with the toner because uh, if you try to rub it too much uh, it might cause irritation and redness so uh, that's how you know I mean toner is not absolutely necessary if you've used a cleanser properly uh, then toner would not be required you can do exfoliation once a week so that all the uh, impurities which have collected uh, in the deep pores that they get removed with your exfoliation uh, yeah rose water Rose water, yes. Sure. Yes, rose water is a very good toner. Rose water can be used and it is, uh, I mean, if you're using a good uh, natural uh, rose water, even rose water ice cubes uh, works very well as a toner. So that is something that can be used. Great. Great. Okay. So I will move on to my next point. Okay. Sorry, one more question. Combination skin, what moisturizer to use? Uh, so the ones which I have just now mentioned, they are good for combination skin as well. Uh, it depends on the season also. So our skin type tends to change with the season. It tends to change with our age. It also changes with any hormonal changes in the body. So you need to see what, um, I mean, if you're in the winters and and you used to have uh, oily skin in the summers, you might be going towards a combination or a dry skin in the winter. So accordingly, you need to change your uh, skin care. One more thing, people would like you to say them again and slowly because I can't even spell half the name so people can actually get the name of the moisturizers you just mentioned. So, sorry, so pretty. If you could say the names again and spell them so that people can actually get the names okay. of the moisturizers. Okay. Second one is physioactive F I S I O A T I V. And third one is um, physioactive F I S I O A T I V. A T I V, sorry. And third one is uh, acne moist. Yeah. A C N E M I O S T, acne moist. And membiohydro, E M E M. M B I O H Y D R E, Membio Hydra. There we go. Okay, so I will move on to my next point, which is going to be the sun and screen protection. So, um, okay, now I would like to ask members of the audience how many of you use, uh, have a habit of using a sunscreen? Never. <laughs> All the time. That's great. At home, no. All the time. Okay. Yes. Anuparna says not no. too often. He says not too often. Shipra says all the time. Okay. Okay. So, um, I, I would like to tell you all one thing that 90% of the uh, age related changes on the skin that is pigmentation, uh, the wrinkling, the dullness, uh, the fine lines, it all happens because of the uh, sun rays. The sun rays have UVA, UVB rays which are extremely harmful for our skin. It leads to formation of um, you know reactive oxygen species which uh, eventually lead to all of these issues in our skin. So sun protection is absolutely important every single day irrespective of whether you're indoors or you're outdoors whether it is winter season or it is rainy season you must must always use a sunscreen um, a lot of people have this issue that you know sunscreen has been very oily very greasy or very white so there are a lot of things available which are very light on the skin you would not even feel like you have applied anything so maybe consult with your uh, 
for this is going to be because uh, the more amount of days earlier we start to age so uh, we must all make a habit of using a uh, sunscreen there are different types of sunscreen available there are physical sunscreen there are chemical sunscreen there are uh, cream based sunscreen there are gel based sunscreens so you need to figure out uh, uh, according to your lifestyle and according to your uh, your skin type which sunscreen is going to be suitable and you must start using that now uh, not just the sun rays uh, we are uh, even though we are uh yeah so even though we are at home these days we are uh, also exposed to a lot of screen time so the screens also emit some uh, rays which are harmful for our skin that's called the blue light so uh, to protect our skin from the blue light uh, along with the physical sunscreens the antioxidant serums need to be applied which help in uh, reducing the toxic uh, substances which are getting formed on the skin because of these rays yes yeah, so uh, you question on something. can you give some uh, clarity SPF 20, 30, SPF 50. What does that mean? What do we use okay. if we're indoors, especially these days? What should we be using? How often do we need to apply sunscreen? Because that's another issue. Right. Okay, so um, uh, SPF is basically sun protection factor. Uh, sun protection factor uh, is basically a ratio to, uh, you know, uh, the amount of rays, sun rays which are entering the skin on a uh, sunscreen protected skin uh, versus a sunscreen unprotected skin. So that's how the term SPF has come about. SPF uh, thirty protection of ninety eight percent. Now, uh, if you ask me whether you should go for a uh, SPF thirty versus SPF fifty. Uh, one second. Could you just repeat that? Because we lost your voice for a bit on that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so if you could just repeat. So is it clear now? Yeah. So if you could repeat that, yes. Is it is it clear now? Yes. Okay. So uh, sun protection factor is basically a ratio of the amount of uh, the UV rays which are entering the skin when we have uh, applied the sunscreen where, uh, versus when we have not applied the sunscreen. So uh, that is the term SPF. Now SPF 15 means 93% of the sun rays, uh, the, we are protected 93%. Uh, SPF 30 means we are protected 97%. And if you are protected 98, so, um, uh, if you ask me whether SPF 30, uh, you should go for SPF 30 or SPF 50 because the percentage difference is only one. Even then, I would suggest uh, it is always worth to go for an SPF 50 sunscreen, especially for people who are over 40 years, because even that one percent increase in um, exposure to the sun rays is going to accelerate your aging process. So, people who are beyond 35, beyond 40, always, always use an SPF 50 sunscreen. Uh, people who are less than 30 but do have a lot of sun exposure because of their occupation or because of their lifestyle, they also must use an SPF 50 sunscreen. Um, as far as the application is concerned, sunscreen has to be taken in the palm. You need to take a good amount in your palm, apply multiple dots all over your face and neck and just spread it all over. If you are out in the sun for more than three hours, you need to reapply your sunscreen because the effect wears off in three hours. So that's a mistake uh, commonly made that we just apply the sunscreen once in the morning and we think we are done for the day. But if we have been out in the sun, uh, you know, our occupation involves uh, working outside, that then we need to reapply our sunscreen every three hours. Or if we are at a beach holiday, uh, another common mistake that I see people making is that uh, they'll apply a really thick layer just before going inside the pool or going in, uh, going into the beach, uh, but they do not reapply uh, once they are uh, out. So that's when the uh, skin is most sensitive to the sun's rays and that's when they get most tan. So just make sure that um, uh, apart from applying it before, you need to reapply as soon as you're out of the water. That is going to give you that extra protection um, from the tanning and the pigmentation. Another question that's come from Shalu, how safe are sunscreens and can children also use sunscreen? Okay, so uh, it depends on which sunscreen is being used. I mean, although majority of the sunscreens, uh, they uh, are FDA approved and they are absolutely safe, uh, but still, uh, you know, physical sunscreens, uh, the, the act by a different mechanism and chemical sunscreens act by a different mechanism. Physical sunscreens, they act by forming a layer on the top of the skin which does not allow the sun rays to enter. So for children especially, uh, physical sunscreens are ideal. Uh, whereas 
chemical sunscreen they form certain components uh, they form a reaction with certain components in the skin and that prevents the um, sun rays from entering so uh, chemical sunscreen uh, is not preferable for um, a younger uh, age group uh, but the problem with physical sunscreen is they tend to leave a whitish layer so that's why that's where uh, chemical sunscreens are more favorable if you don't want that whitish layer then chemical sunscreen uh, is the better option thank you go ahead sorry i know we are only on number 2 and we have lost <laughs> no issues uh, okay so i hope uh, we also agree anukita sorry we also appreciate your patience thank you so much i hope all the 70 participants who are here today are going to buy a good sunscreen and start using it from tomorrow itself any brand physical and chemical of course you were going to get that question <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I will just quickly say two or three brands for each. For uh, physical sunscreen, there is Lashi Physico, which is a, a favorite of mine. Then um, physical sunscreen, you can use uh, Sun Sunstop Silk. That is a physical sunscreen. Then uh, chemical sunscreen, um, there is uh, Barry Sun. There is uh, Avil. there is um lash shield ir which is a chemical sunscreen physico is a physical sunscreen ir is a chemical sunscreen um face guard that's also another favorite of mine um uh, that's a chemical sunscreen i think uh, that should be sufficient and you will have to write them all at the end i'll make sure she writes them yes. is there any natural sun home remedy or home sunscreen calamine calamine is a i mean it's not natural but calamine is something which has zinc oxide and acts like a physical barrier acts like a physical sunscreen thank you go ahead okay so i will go back to my uh, presentation and my next point which i want to talk about is glowing skin from within okay so uh, most of our uh, whatever we eat that reflects on our skin so our skin health is majorly dependent upon our diet and our lifestyle uh, uh, you know a lot of our in, even the internal diseases they start showing on the skin first so uh, for maintaining a healthy skin the most important thing is, is the hydration you need to make sure that you have at least 2 to 2 and a half liters of water every day 70% of our skin cells is just made up of water so we need to give it that amount of hydration um, the hydration does not only have to be from pure water it can be in the form of juices it could be in the form of smoothies uh, or shakes so just make sure that you are having adequate amount of fluids throughout the day especially during winters in winters we tend to reduce our water intake but uh, we must uh, make sure that we are having a good amount of fluids to uh, maintain the hydration of our body as well as our skin Uh, as far as the uh, diet is concerned your uh, skin requires a good amount of vitamin a vitamin c uh, which are also known as the bioflavonoids and they are uh, majorly present in all the colorful fruits and vegetables uh, in winters we we get a lot of nice colorful fruits and vegetables so more the amount of color on your fruit platter more amount of nutrients and uh, more glowing is uh, that your skin is going to be so uh, you know your uh, all your berries is or uh, your uh, kiwi your uh, apple you know just have as many colorful uh, fr fruits and vegetables in your diet as much as possible apart from that your hair needs a good amount of protein so uh, for vegetarians you need to uh, you can take your protein from your pulses tofu paneer um broccoli uh, you know just make sure that you you have a good amount of all of these non vegetarian of course egg is a good good source then the seafood uh, is a good source of proteins um apart from that uh, you need to cut down on your junk food cut down on your carbohydrates cut down on preservatives because these are all <clears throat> they all increase the amount of uh, you know the uh, the reactive oxygen species in the blood and that causes an impact on the skin you might have yourself noticed that um, you know once when you are continuously having a lot of junk food or you know fried food your skin starts looking dull so that's because your diet 
does uh, impact your skin uh, quite a lot. So, um, I mean, festivities is a is a good time to be uh, indulging, but make sure that you maintain a good balanced diet uh, as well. Uh, green tea is a great source of antioxidants, so you can increase your green tea intake uh, during the winter season. So, you know, that will also uh, give you hydration as well as, uh, you know, the antioxidants which are required for the skin. Um, apart from that, the uh, <clears throat> omega-3 fatty acids, they are also very good. They are present in walnuts, in flax seeds, in uh, the, you know, seafood, cod liver oil. So you can increase uh, in the intake of these as well. Uh, just, you know, understand that your skin is going to reflect whatever you're, you're putting in your mouth. So be conscious, be aware of what you're eating uh, so that you can take care of your skin. Any questions? No, not on this one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's great. That's great. Okay, so now going on to my next point. Um, okay, never too early to start skincare. So a lot of, uh, you know, patients and, uh, you know, a lot of people ask me, when is it a good time to start taking care of the skin? My answer to that is, it's never too early. Whenever you realize, like today you're sitting in the session, today you're understanding that it is important to take care of your skin. So please, you know, uh, just start from today itself uh, to start taking care. Do your basics. Start with your basics. So what I just told you, the cleanser, your treat and your moisturizer and then your sunscreen. And slowly, uh, once this gets into your habit, you can uh, move on to the other things, you know, the uh, maybe the face masks, the, uh, you know, the home treatments or the clinic treatments, but just start as early as possible. The earlier you start, the longer you will be able to maintain your youthful appearance. Um, the, you know, all the major treatments uh, will not be required for a longer time if you start doing little, little in the, uh, you know, early years itself. Uh, you know, if you're in your 20s, at least start with your basic chemical peels because that is, uh, you know, with age, our natural exfoliation process tends to reduce. It Becomes much slower. So, with the help of treatments like chemical peels, uh, we do a chemical exfoliation which removes the dead layer and stimulates your underlying cells to produce newer and uh, younger looking cells. So, you can, um, you know, uh, start with those in your 30s. You can start with your microneedling treatments. You can start with your baby Botox, which is going to help in, uh, you know, uh, slowly uh, building your collagen, slowly building, um, uh, you know, reducing the lines which start developing. Uh, you can start with your laser toning. Laser toning is a great treatment for uh, improving the collagen, reducing the uh, pigmentation. And again, uh, it is also a way of exfoliation. So start uh, early, start by little, little, so that major overhauls can be avoided in the long run. Now, one question I have, and this is something that you and I were also discussing before the session started, Botox. Why is it such a scary word? I mean, we hear Botox and we feel like, I mean, I know so many of my friends, so many people do get it done, but nobody wants to say they've got Botox. You muted yourself. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Um, so, yes, Botox has become a huge um huge uh, i mean although a lot of people are already getting it done they don't want to talk about it because it has uh, it has been a, a very overhyped treatment i would say um uh, just just give me a second just one second sorry yeah so uh, I think um, a lot of it is because of the, uh, you know, the media, media has created a lot of uh, wrong notions about Botox. Uh, people tend to believe that uh, Botox is make, going to make them look plastic or it's some artificial treatment, uh, which, you know, will uh, uh, make them look very frozen, very odd. But um, Botox is just a purified protein. It's, uh, you know, a very purified protein, which is uh, put in the muscles. Uh, to relax them. So with age, because we have a constant habit, like, you know, if I have a habit of constantly frowning, or if I have a habit of... You don't have any here. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, a lot of people do that, like even uh, unconsciously, they will be constantly frowning. So they tend to develop these frown lines, which eventually become permanent lines. So to relax this uh, habit and to relax this muscle is, uh, you know, we inject the Botox and um, the... Uh, 
good part i would say about botox is it's not a uh, it's a temporary treatment so uh, you know the, the effects last for uh, about 3 to 5 months uh, and in those 3 to 5 months you have habit of reducing the muscle reduces so after 3 to 5 months the lines won't be that prominent and once you start doing it um, uh, over a period of time the muscle activity itself reduces so that way uh, you know you're uh, delaying the occurrence of your permanent lines excellent thank you for clarifying that okay so i will move on to the next slide and okay so Yupur, I think you just uh, right now your voice is cracking. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. I think, uh, but we're not able to see your screen. Hi. I think you. Ah, uh, maybe let's go without the slide because uh, is it better? I, I think it's better. Yeah. Okay. So the under eye area is the most thin and the most sensitive area, and that's where the changes of aging or any other uh, you know in, uh, important things that happen on the face they start showing first. So uh, a lot of people have the dark circles, or a lot of people have that under eye hollowness. Uh, for under eye care, uh, just few important things which I would want to point out. The first thing is to find out the cause. The most important cause uh, are the diet and lifestyle related. So if you have a dietary deficiency, uh, it could be an iron deficiency, it could be a vitamin. the o b12 deficiency which could be responsible for the under eye pigmentation if you're having lack of sleep or if you're too stressed that also leads to uh, dark circles um if you have a habit of rubbing your eyes especially people who have a lot of eye allergies they tend to rub their eyes a lot so that leads to friction and under eye pigmentation so uh, you need to first understand what is the cause because the cause needs to be treated, treated alongside the problem um uh, for the uh, like for the pigmentation there are under eye lightening creams you can use creams which contain uh, vitamin k which you can use creams which contain vitamin c that helps in um, lightening the area uh, uh, to get rid of the puffiness which sometimes have lack and people you know a lot of people have that uh, uh, issue of under eye puffiness uh, for to getting an instant relief you can just rub some ice that will temporarily uh, relieve the puffiness you can use green tea bags cool green tea bags that works like wonders because it has antioxidants and that helps in reducing the uh, puffiness um you can even use cucumber grated cucumber cucumber slices that also cools and reduces the puffiness so that's like a quick fix uh, quick fix before any party or occasion but um to get a uh, you know permanent relief um if you have under eye fat pads then surgical treatment in which surgically we remove the the fat bags which are there that gives a permanent relief um if you have a uh, depression under the eye so there are a lot of people who are young who uh, who are well you know who are well rested who, who don't have so much of stress but they still keep looking tired and you know, look like you know they haven't slept that is because of the under eye depression which they have that could be a genetic uh, thing like a bony structure could be like that because of which uh you know they they have that depression for those uh, the hyaluronic acid fillers they they are the best solution the hyaluronic acid fillers when injected uh, in that depression it gives an instant lift and makes you look instantly fresh and uh, you know it just takes care of uh, takes away that uh, tired look from your face and it lasts for at least one to one and a half years so that is an amazing solution for people with the uh, under eye depression but if you if you have any of these issues you must always please consult uh, your dermatologist and get the cause figured out and uh, get it treated alongside so um my next point is about the neck and the hands so uh you know a lot of times when we are doing our skin care uh, we tend to neglect the hands and the neck uh if uh, you know you might have noticed there are people who look very young and you know absolutely clear skin absolutely tight uh, tight you know uh, skin uh but the and the neck is very loose and very wrinkly so you must make sure that whatever products you're applying on your face whether it's your moisturizer or it's your uh, serum or your sunscreen 
you should not neglect your neck area your uh, area behind the ears as well as your hands because you don't want to look like you're in your 30s from here and in your 50s from here so that that will just make you look very odd so make sure that you do not neglect these areas they also require that special care which you are doing for your face okay so the next point is the hair care um okay from the audience how many of you are having hair fall issues these days me, me. <laughs> <laughs> me too me too me too <laughs> so you know honestly so the 90% of my clinical opd these days is hair fall hair fall has been such a big uh, issue in the past few months especially because of this covid-19 pandemic uh, you know what happens uh, whenever there is any kind of stress on the body whether it's a physical stress or a mental stress the hair follicles tend to react by shutting down and that's when we noticed hair start, start noticing hair fall uh, even post pregnancy like post delivery delivery is such a big stressful event for the body 2 to 3 months later is when we start noticing the hair fall right so similarly uh, you know it could be any stress it could be uh, you know any kind of illness that we have had any kind of uh, uh, you know trauma any kind of surgery or any kind of emotional stress that we have undergone we will uh, eventually be facing uh, hair fall after 2 to 3 months Uh, well the good part about this hair fall is that as soon as the causative factor that is the cause because of which this is happening is removed the hair tends to grow back you won't become bald because of this kind of hair fall but the hair growth needs to be supported during this time you need to take care of your hair by having the correct amount of nutrients the you know your biotin supplements or your other nutrients zinc which are required for hair they need to be taken uh, you need to get your blood test done you need to make sure that you don't have any deficiency especially the iron vitamin d b12 or if you have any hormonal imbalance whether it's pcod or it is thyroid all of that needs to be treated alongside and along with the symptomatic treatment with the use of the hair nutrients with the use of minoxidil lotion um, hair growth serums which is going to boost the hair growth and you need to you know avoid stress i mean how much ever it is possible you need to do your yoga you need to do your pranayama meditation to reduce the stress levels because uh, stress will increase your hair fall your hair fall will increase your stress so you know we don't we want to break that vicious cycle right so um uh, first and foremost get your blood test done make sure that your iron and vitamin levels are normal uh, if they are not start those supplements visit a dermatologist start taking treatment apart from the medical treatment the the oral uh, supplements along with the minoxidil lotions uh, there are treatments like prp the platelet rich plasma therapy which you can go for uh, prp is a wonderful treatment uh, in which uh, the you know we take the patient's blood and we separate out platelets which are special cells in the blood and they have a lot of growth factors in them and these cells are then directly injected into the hair follicle so that's like giving huge packets of growth factor and huge uh, you know boost to your hair follicles to grow so this prp along with the medical treatment and the treatment of the cause is what is going to help in improving the uh, reducing the hair fall and improving the hair growth we've got a question here from nilima how to reduce gray hair okay um so gray hair is a, a genetic phenomenon a lot of people have premature graying because of uh, you know a family history like you know it could be running in your genes or it is also related to your lifestyle uh, the pollution the you know if you're a smoker or if you know you have some dietary deficiencies these are all factors which are responsible for uh, premature graying uh, as i said you need to again figure out that you know none of uh, you know none of the causes like deficiencies are there if you have a deficiency take the supplements uh, once the graying sets in um, uh, you know it's very difficult to treat so try to as soon as you start seeing one or two uh, gray hairs try to address the problem that at uh, that time itself there are certain lotions which are available in the market which contain a component called melatonin uh, it has been recently introduced and it has shown benefit in uh, in few uh, uh, studies in improving premature graying so that is something which uh, you know which can be tried another question that comes in from sneha is it safe to apply minoxidil for a very long time 
Uh, I'm glad Sneha, you have asked this question because that is another thing which I wanted to address. And a lot of people are very apprehensive about minoxidil. Like you know, uh, I don't know what all is written on Google about minoxidil, but uh, people always come to me and ask me that uh, you know, minoxidil, uh, we will use it and then we will close it. So it will be bad for us. And just a lot of myths are associated with it. Um, uh, minoxidil is the only US FDA approved. Uh, topical notion which can actually improve hair growth. So it is basically a vasodilator that is it dilates the blood vessels, improves the circulation in the scalp and thus stimulates the hair follicles. Um, uh, minoxidil is a, is, a, is a topical agent which has a very slow way of action. So uh, people who start applying minoxidil and don't see any results in say you know two weeks or four weeks and they stop using, uh, there's going to be no use of doing that. You need we use an oxygen for at least three to six months to be able to see any appreciable benefits. And um, as far as the safety concern is, um, uh, you know, safety is concerned, it is absolutely uh, safe lotion. Uh, earlier, when minoxidil was uh, first introduced, it was introduced as an anti-hypertensive agent. It used to be given to people who had, uh, you know, hypertension as an oral medicine. And that's uh, when, uh, you know, when they used to have that, they started noticing that the hair growth has improved. So then uh, a lot of studies were done. And that's when the top when using it topically, the absorption is only at the level of the skin, only up to the level of the hair follicles. So it has uh, side effects on the body as such. Um, uh, one side effect which I, because the minoxidil uh, formulation is made with some amount of preservatives, no, we just lost you. I think your uh, yeah. Nupur, your uh, network, I think, just went red. So if you want to repeat that. The only side is Nupur? Hi. I think you may have to repeat. Is it fine now? Yeah. No, it's still coming red. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to request you to maybe turn off your video for a bit and repeat that and then turn your video on again. Hi, Nupur, are you there? Just give us a second. Nupur, you're on mute. Go ahead. Yeah. Am I audible now? Yes, you are. So go ahead. I think uh, some okay, of them. Okay, um, Okay, so um, as I was saying, the only side effect which um, which I have noticed in some of the people is the increase in dandruff, which is just due to the preservatives or the other additive substances which are added in the formulation. Apart from that, it's a pretty safe Uh, people are uh, also apprehensive that once we stop the medicine, our hair will become worse. Uh, that doesn't happen. Your hair will just go back to how it was. So, uh, especially if you have a pattern. Um... Go ahead, Rupert. I've just turned off your video because your voice was cracking. So, we'll put on the video when you get a better network. Hello? Yeah. You'd, uh, I'm just going to stop your video for a bit Hello. because your voice is cracking. Nupur, I'm just stopping your okay, video okay. because your voice is cracking okay, so that okay. now you can go ahead. Sorry about that. Could you repeat okay. that? Yeah, no issues. Okay. Yeah, so, um, um, okay, where was I? Um, the minoxidil about the side effects. Yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, minoxidil doesn't have any major side effects. It can be used for years together. Uh, people who have a male pattern baldness or a female pattern baldness, which is a hormonal hair loss, um, they need to use it for years also. So um, I mean, we have been using it for years and there hasn't been any problem as such. So uh, I would say minoxidil is a safe medicine to use, but um, uh, always consult with the dermatologist. Uh, you know, uh, he will tell you or she will tell you which is the best way to use it. Um, the to 
are supposed to use it, whether you need to use it daily, alternate days, or whichever is the best suited for your hair problem, just follow um, your you know the instructions which the dermatologist gives you. Okay, two questions. One is from Sundaria. Any home remedies to boost hair growth? And from Sneha, if you're getting benefited by minoxidil, then should you stop using it? Okay, so home remedies for boosting hair growth. Well, uh, home remedies is the, I think the most important thing is the diet. You need to make sure that you have a high protein diet. You need to have a good amount of healthy vegetables uh, because um, uh, even the hair health is related to your, um, uh, hair, your own health. So your diet plays a very important role. Avoid stress as much as possible. Stress is uh, uh, it plays a huge impact on the hair growth. You might have yourself noticed whenever you undergo a stressful period in your life you start noticing hair fall so uh, avoid stress as much as possible as far as diys or use of you know home uh, substances to improve hair growth is concerned um, i mean uh, the hair follicle is situated a little deeper in the skin so usually you know uh, whatever we apply on top it doesn't uh, cause major impact at the level of the hair follicle and the hair follicle is where all the action takes place where you know how how much the hair is going to grow how much uh, how thick is it going to be so uh, i mean uh, the, the home packs and the home care is good for um, you know moisturizing or for reducing fizziness and all but it won't uh, cause much improvement in your hair growth as such okay thank you you're welcome. And uh, the second question was, yeah, if if you are getting benefit with minoxidil. So if uh, if you have the uh, hair loss problem, hair fall problem, which I have just discussed, which is actually also called telogen effluvium. Telogen effluvium is a condition when we notice bunches of hair fall, which is related to any of the causes which I just explained. So if you have telogen effluvium and you are treating your cause along with the use of minoxidil, then as soon as your cause is removed, you can even stop minoxidil your hair growth will be maintained but if your cause is not removed as soon as you stop minoxidil again the hair fall will start so uh, it has to to be an all-round approach, minoxidil is not a one-stop solution. You, you know, you apply minoxidil, and the uh, you know that's it. You need to figure out the cause. You need to treat that alongside. Excellent. Thank you for that. So I know we have a couple of more, and a lot of questions have come in also. Okay, so do you want me to share my screen? Can, can I share my screen now? Share your screen, let's try. Okay, okay, so let me just um, go on to the... Um, next point is okay natural versus chemical right so this was an important uh, thing which i wanted to um, discuss today um so a uh, lot of people are in the uh, you know they have a belief that you know uh, skincare should only be with natural things and uh, chemical things are going to be harmed for your skin well i just wanted to uh, share with you all that everything natural is not safe and everything chemical is not unsafe so um, that is something which i would like to put across today uh, how many of you have um, uh, how many of you do believe that only natural treatments is what we should be doing for our skin I think I do both. Okay. Mix of both is good, Dimple said. Okay, great. Both. Mix, Mix of both. both. But okay. I think there is a trend, though, that people are talking a lot more about natural treatments. Okay. Right. Dimple says both. Anubha says both. Okay. So, can I switch on my video now? You're yeah, still sure. getting a red, so that means you're okay. Fine, all right. Yeah. Okay, okay, TK. Fine. So, um, okay, so now natural versus chemical. Uh, I hope you all know that the water that you drink, uh, which you would consider as natural, is actually also a chemical. So, uh, you know, uh, 
everything, every even the natural products that you use, it is actually eventually a chemical which is there in it. Now, um, the if you talk about say for example uh, lemon versus a vitamin C serum. Now, lemon is a great ingredient for the skin. It uh, it it contains a good amount of vitamin C, which is an antioxidant, and it can help in giving you a nice glowing. In uh, you know well well toned skin, but um, uh, you know in ancient times they used to use lemon, but now uh, we are using vitamin C serums. Uh, the scientists uh, who discovered this, they they worked upon uh, you know figuring out more purified, more potent forms of. Uh, vitamin C, which would have more amount of the active ingredient, which would actually be uh, causing, uh, which would actually be responsible for causing the changes which are required in the skin to cause the improvement. So that's how the vitamin C serum came about. Now, for you, lemon is uh, natural, but vitamin C is, is a serum is a chemical. But uh, if you ask me, vitamin C serum is a much better thing to use than a natural homemade lemon. Um, uh, so similarly, you know, um, most of the uh, home care stuff that uh, that we use that is uh, going to is good for maintenance it's good for uh, uh, you know helping you in basic skin care but if you do have any particular skin concerns if you have acne if you have uh, melasma if you have uh, scars then we can't expect any kind of uh, much results coming from just home care you need to get the proper treatment done you need to use the proper medicated creams for those a uh, lot of people keep trying out diys for acne you know, uh, their teenage uh, daughters, they get acne and they do DIYs at home and they end up with uh, very bad reactions and marks and scars which are then eventually much more difficult to treat than the acne itself. So that is why everything natural is not safe and everything chemical is not unsafe. Um, even you know with a simple thing like aloe vera, if, you know, like you know if it's something like aloe vera which is derived directly from the plant, I have seen patients get a reaction from that as well. So everything uh, that is given on the net and everything which has suited your friend doesn't mean that will suit you also so you need to be very careful about what you're applying on the skin you need to be very aware you need to be very informed about uh, what you're using on the skin uh, don't use everything which is given online uh, don't use everything which is which your you know friend is or your family member is telling you uh, speak to a dermatologist take that advice and only then uh, start doing anything for your skin uh, I, are you you're talking about acne next, right? Because I think they because you've spoken about it. So somebody has asked us, please get some good ointments to reduce acne scars. And a lot of talk also for hair growth is this onion juice. So uh, how good is that for hair growth? Onion juice. Um, okay, so onion juice does have certain components uh, which have in certain studies shown improvement in hair growth. So uh, I mean, the, I mean, the, a lot of patients have come and told me that they got improvement in their hair growth. So uh, I would say that uh, it's it's worth a try. You can give it a try. Uh, it's just a bad smell, which I'm worried about. Uh, like if you're okay with that, maybe you can use it uh, once a week or once in two weeks. And then acne scars, any good ointments and stuff to reduce acne scars? Okay, so acne scars are, uh, again, the changes which are happening in the acne scars are a little deeper in the skin. They are basically like pits. They are gadhas. So to fill up any uh, pit in the skin or to fill up any gap, we need collagen fibers. So the collagen fibers are the cementing substances which are there in the skin. To make sure that the collagen is coming uh, and filling up those gaps, uh, we need to, uh, uh, you know, do some kind of uh, treatment on the skin uh, which will uh, give the skin a sense that you know it needs to start making more collagen over here so uh, as far as treatments are concerned microneedling radio frequency is a wonderful treatment for acne scars it's to Stimulates the body's own collagen fibers, own collagen synthesis, and shows improvement in acne scars, open pores, as well as skin tightening. Uh, as far as ointments are concerned, um, uh, retinol-based uh, creams are uh, retinol-based cream, which also helps in exfoliation and stimulating the collagen uh, synthesis. That is something which shows improvement. Uh, apart from that, glycolic acid is again AHA, uh, which helps in uh, you know an exfoliation and improving the collagen synthesis. So these are two of my favorites for uh, acne scar. And any tree uh, creams to treat pimples? Yes. So. 
Uh, for pimples, first of all, you need to make sure that you are not using any thick creams on your face because a lot of people, they are they end up using so many products on their skin that itself will, uh, you know, need to blockade off the sebaceous glands and more eruptions. So first and foremost, you need to go back and look at what all are you applying on your skin. If any of those is something which is going to be uh, blocking your glands further, you need to stop it right away. Uh, there are gels which are available uh, which contain clindamycin, uh, which contain adapalene, benzoyl peroxide gels. These are all uh, gels which are uh, used for treating active acne. But always, always to be done under the supervision of a dermatologist because uh, if you use too much of it, if you don't apply it correctly, it can lead to a lot of redness and irritation and make your skin condition worse. I know, Nupur, you have two more tips, so please go ahead. And I know we have also <laughs> run out of time, so I apologize. Okay, so coming to the next point, which is the mask acne. So now, uh, now because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we are uh, constantly wearing masks and a lot of people are facing a lot of mask related skin issues. They're having redness under the mask, they're having irritation, they're having a lot of eruptions, uh, acne eruptions under the mask. A uh, few tips which will help you in taking care of the skin while keeping yourself safe. Uh, you need to make sure that you clean your skin properly before and after wearing your mask. Uh, apply a thin layer of your moisturizer. Don't use a thick cream but a light thin moisturizer uh, before you wear your mask and your mask needs to be clean uh, you, your mask your hands even uh, you know while before wearing you need to make sure you uh, wash your hands properly and then you wear your mask and as soon as you remove your mask again you know wash your hands uh, keep separate uh, keep set of masks so that every day they are getting washed um, just make sure again you're cleaning your face applying your moisturizer if you still keep developing any kind of eruptions please do consult with the dermatologist don't try any home remedies or remedies which are prescribed by a chemist because many of those contain steroids which might even cause more harm so um, <clears throat> always take the correct advice okay now should i move on yes okay now the last point of my presentation is do not ignore skin problems so uh, i would like to ask the audience um, how many of you would uh, uh, if you have any heart problem would you be asking on uh, facebook groups or on whatsapp groups regarding uh, what to do about it or would you be visiting a cardiologist for it I think, yeah, heart problems, we still <laughs> first ask on Facebook these days, on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so, so, you easy. know, <laughs> yeah, like uh, uh, every day, uh, as soon as I, you know, whenever I open my Facebook, there are at least like three, four questions on different groups where the uh, people are asking, my skin is feeling dry, what should I apply? My skin is having this reaction, what should I apply? Uh, I just want to put this across that your skin is an organ of your body. It is after all uh, an organ, which is, in fact, it is the biggest organ, largest organ of your body. So please take advice from the correct people, from the specialist for it. Do not take random advice from people uh, you know uh, on Facebook groups or on WhatsApp groups for it and uh, then end up making things worse for yourself just as your heart for your heart or for your bone you would go to the particular specialist for your skin you need to visit the specialist uh, who will be able to analyze your skin according to your skin type and then advise the skin uh, what is the best treatment for your skin problem. Thank you, Nupur. I think totally true. That's why we've been doing a lot of sessions because I know that skin health, a lot of issues, a lot of us actually, unfortunately, have not been able to visit uh, the doctor or the clinic. How effective is online consultations nowadays? So, yeah, online consultation have uh, really picked up in the past few months, especially obviously because of the pandemic. And uh, uh, honestly, with skin, it, I think it's a big advantage because a lot of the skin issues are like more visual than, uh, uh, you know, than uh, examining so many of the problems can be diagnosed over an online consultation and can be treated in that itself but having said that there are obviously a different set of problems which would require that you visit the doctor so that they can examine it properly and if they do require any immediate treatment that can be done in the clinic itself so uh, i mean there are bo both both ways to it 
Now, before we sign off for today, I know there are two questions that have come up and I would like you to get your reflections on that. One is for open pores. So what can be done about that? What can we do at home? And the second one is about whiteheads, which is again, another common problem. Right, okay. So open pores is uh, basically the uh, the openings of our sebaceous gland or the oil producing glands, which, um, which can occur either because you have very oily skin or it could be age related with age because of reduction in the collagen uh, the the gland opening becomes very loose and that's when we start noticing this open pores on the skin uh, the open pores may tend to make our skin look like it has an uneven texture and even the makeup doesn't set uh, properly because of that so um, uh, open pores for open pores the uh, immediate relief you can get if you need to you know get ready for a party or something you can just apply ice cube that helps in immediately shrinking the pores and you can immediately you can then apply your makeup and it'll look all uh, you know uh, the texture looks much improved you can use um, uh, even uh, you know rose water ice cubes as, as we already discussed that also works very well uh, as far as the treatment is concerned uh, you know salicylic acid based face washes they they work very well for open pores uh, glycolic acid also works uh, well for open pores you can use retinol based creams or tretinoin based creams um, that helps in improving the open pores uh, but to uh, you know to give you a good a permanent solution um, there are treatments like mesobotox in which we use very very diluted forms of botox which helps in uh, uh, shrinking the pores uh, that that gives very good results especially you know brides uh, for brides it is an amazing solution it gives an immediate uh, instant relief to them uh, then microneedling radio frequency which are discussed for open uh, for scars that works for open pores as well because the idea is the same to build up the collagen so by doing this treatment we build up the skin's collagen and that helps in improving the appearance of the open pores couple of questions should we dab or rub the ice cubes and i know there was a question that came also before these laser treatments and all of this do they harm the skin and can they hurt the eyesight Okay, so uh, ice cubes just needs to be gently rubbed. You don't need to press it or dab it in any way. Uh, just, you know, gently rub it for about, uh, you know, a minute or two and that should be sufficient. Uh, next question was, uh, yeah, the laser treatment. The laser treatment, uh, so there are different types of laser treatments. We have laser for hair reduction, we have laser for pigmentation, we have laser for scars, we have laser for skin tightening. So, uh, uh, you know, it depends on what concern you have. Uh, as far as the safety is concerned, all of these treatments, as I said, they only come into the market or they only come to the clinics once they have been undergone almost like 50 to 100 scientific studies and have been proved that they're absolutely safe for the human body that's when we start doing it so um, they are absolutely safe the uh, properties of the laser beam are such that if it's a hair removal laser it only only detects the hair hair follicle and removes that it doesn't go deeper it doesn't go into our tissues or into the blood vessels or into our nerves to cause any kind of long-term side effect if it is a pigmentation laser it only only detects the extra melanin pigment which is there in the skin and removes that from under the skin uh, if it is a scar laser it only um, you know it causes resurfacing and stimulates the collagen fibers so depending on what laser is there they are very very sophisticated and um, uh, they are very particular for the treatment that uh, that is that they're supposed to do. Sorry, two more questions, and I know we're running out of time, so I apologize. Vitamin serum, no serum, what brand? Retinol and AHA, what brands? Uh, vitamin C. Them, that would be great because that will be the next question. <laughs> you said vitamin C, right? Vitamin C serum. Okay, yes. so vitamin C serum, um, my favorites, uh, I will just say my top four, Cesderma, uh, Seawit Liposomal Serum, um, uh, VCX or VC20, the, they are also very good vitamin C serums. Then uh, IS Clinical is a new brand from US, uh, their vitamin C serum is also very good. Um, Revibra, Revibra C20, that's another great brand for vitamin C. And next was uh, you retinol asked um, and retinol, right? Yes. Sorry. Retinol and AHA brands. Yeah. Okay, so retinol, um, retinol. Okay, um, retiage. Uh, that is a great retinol serum. Ugard. That is a very good uh, retinol cream. Then um, Ega, that's also a good retinol cream. 
Um, again, Ice Clinical has a very good retinol serum that can be tried. Uh, AHA, 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 FCL, AHA Lightning Gel. That's very good. So AHA is basically, you know, glycolic acid. It comes in different percentages uh, based on different concerns. Um, there is glyco 12, if you have scars, that works very well. Then there's glyco 6, which is a lesser percentage, that is 6% glycolic acid for people who can't, uh, for who get any kind of irritant reaction because of 12%. So, I mean, um, it, it depends on what skin type you have and what is your skin concern. So I hope I've taken everyone's questions. Sorry if I've missed yours. I know we are out of time. So thank you, Dr. Nupur. Any last tip before we sign off for today? And I know that we are sorry we're not able to put your camera on because you're still getting, I think, a weak network. <laughs> okay, no problem. And, um, so I think we need to hear this. Great. <laughs> Okay, great. So, um, I, mean, I think I, I would just like to sign off by saying that, you know, everyone wants flawless and picture perfect skin. And there are a lot of people who actually go to great lengths and spend huge amounts of money in buying hordes of different products, whatever is new in the market, they try, try to buy that. But uh, one of them doesn't work and, you know, all of it goes waste. So, start with the basics. Just buy uh, only three or four products, only for one month. Don't buy for the whole year. Just buy for one month and give it time whatever skin, new skin products or whatever skin treatments you are doing you need to have patience you need to give at least two to three months time for it to actually show your any kind of beneficial results anyone who's promising you magic that you know you start using it today and by tomorrow your skin will be flawless is is just please Uh, give it time, give, have patience, and um, start taking care of your skin. One request, Dr. Nupur, if you can send us all the names, we'll put it on our website so that people can actually take down all the names because I'm afraid to also write them because I think half of them I will misspell. <laughs> okay, okay, sure, 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 I will do that. Yeah. We will post them on our web page, so they will be on our uh, Facebook page. You can find all the names there. We'll make sure to get them from Dr. Nupur. So thank you, Dr. Nupur, for being with us. Thank you all for joining us, and I wish you all a good night. And most importantly, I think we all need to get cracking on at least the basic skincare routine. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>